So you've got the name and the title. I'm going to talk a little bit about GeoPackage, a little bit about the standardization process, and a lot about the people involved. One of the things that came out of Paul's talk was this, the importance of people and the systems in which they work. And this was certainly not the work of one person. So I started with GeoPackage whilst working on another project called Spatialite. Some of you may have heard of it. Uh, Sandro Ferreri is the lead frenetic developer of this project. So Spatialite is a set of spatial extensions to SQLite in the same way that PostG is a set of spatial extensions to PostgreSQL. And we were busy working away and we got an email from this guy. His name is Paul Daisy. People may have come across that name. Paul was the editor of the GML spec. And he was doing some work with a group, US Army Corps of Engineers, who were doing an Android project. They bought 10,000 Androids for a trial. Different world. Um, and what they ended up with was software, but Androids, particularly in that sort of time, this was sort of 2012, um, didn't have a huge amount of space. They wanted to share data between their applications. <coughs> And that led to some standardization work, which was this thing called GeoPackage. And in the original part, it was going to be a lot about SQLite, SpatialLite. The SQLite part survived, SpatialLite ended up implementing some of the GeoPackage stuff. And along the way, um, it moved out of being this general development to an OGC-driven activity. So the Open Geospatial Consortium, who I'd be happy to talk to over about over beers for all the things I'd like to criticise them for. <laughs> um, but, but this was sort of a turning point in, in OGC land, primarily because of this guy, Chris Holmes, um, who went on to do many other marvellous things and has done marvellous things before. But he drove them to a very open approach. So previously, you had to be in the OGC to be able to play in their world. They were very big on intellectual property protections and that sort of stuff. But there was a lot of focus on moving out of this walled garden into a much more open approach. And, that, and part of that was getting up on, on GitHub. The other thing that's really important, and I hadn't understood how important, is this idea of executable tests. When we say conformant, so that's why there's two links, because one is the spec and the other was the uh, executable tests. So a little bit about GeoPackage, and I'm going to have to talk really fast because now I don't catch up because my slides just keep going. One of the things about GeoPackage is it's not just SQLite. It's SQLite and a set of conventions for how to discover the data that's in your, your stuff. And you can have multiple bits of data. So the most important thing in this diagram is the bit at the top where it says GeoPackage contents because that allows you to discover what you have. Um, the other part that's worth noting in the top right, is this idea of extensions. So this is an extensible thing. As you come down, you can have multiple kinds of features. You can also have tiles in here. So if people have seen MB tiles and other offline tiles stuff, same sorts of ideas. You can also mark this thing with metadata so you can discover it later and you can decide whether you trust it. Um, this is the not very intelligible side. But you don't have to do tiles and features. You can do tiles or features or neither. So this is the features bit. And what it says is I can discover what my content is. And my feature table, which can contain geometry collections if you want. So you can actually start to mix different kinds of geometry in here. And all this stuff appears in one file. And that's a really powerful idea. There's a next slide coming, as I'll keep talking. Um, but you can also find out what the geometry columns are. There can be more than one. It's not a good idea. But for anyone who's ever done a uh, shapefile and asked someone to zip up the shapefile and was hoping for the top but got the bottom, <laughs> you also gain some other advantages, like you can go to more than 10 characters <coughs> in the, uh, the attribute name. Um, this idea of it's just one file also helps on this side, which is the tiles part. So people have ever done really small 
uh, tiles, 256 by 256 ping tiles, are often pretty small, less than a K. And you put them on a file system, uses 4K blocks, now it takes four times as much space. Um, it's also very easy to lose tiles, and this allows you to build tile hierarchies uh, in ways that are much more complicated than MB tiles, which is very Web Mercator linked. Um, so now what we've got is this idea of the base map and all of the overlay layers you would like to put in, all in one. There's also some extensions to do other things like elevation data. And another one I'm going to talk about that these guys came up with originally. Um, these guys work for CompuSalt, Adam Parsons on the left, uh, Jason McDonald on the right, and a guy called Rob Kaz who also did a lot of work. What they were trying to do was to do um, intelligence gathering for first responders, for, for warfighters, it's a lot of military stuff in, in this story. Um, but how you take photos and link photos to geographic locations. So that was going to be the media extension to, to GeoPackage. But along the way, and, and they sold this idea to uh, some more people we were out to meet, um, they decided that you can't be interoperable by, you can't be in, interoperable the, by yourself. It, you have to standardisation to be interoperable. And the people who were doing this work um, and had a lot of interest in intelligence gathering um, was US SOCOM. And they are always interested in new ideas, Small competitive advantages makes a difference between living and not living. Um, Softworks is a um, sort of an R&D um, tech hub um, that they fund. Um, it's all down in Tampa in Florida. Um, the guys from CompuSalt are in Nova Scotia. Uh, sorry, Tampa in Florida, yeah, Nova Scotia, which is in, in Canada. Um, so when we went to the standardization work and I'm convinced this is not actually a photo of her, um, but the unsung hero of this stuff is, is Susan Ramey. Um, she sent me this photo, which I guess is meant to be figurative. Um, <laughs> um, because she got the idea up and got the funding happening. Um, and that idea about how you, you motivate people, money is obviously a good cash economy way to attract people for standardisation stuff that's otherwise not very impressive. Um, I didn't make any money out of any of this, but maybe next time. Um, but all of this work required multiple people and the users and the user representatives are really key. The other person who did a lot of work is this guy, Jeff Yutzler, um, who took over the editorial work on GeoPackage from, from Paul Daisy along the way. Um, and Jeff was the, the reach out. He has a software development background, but a lot of work on standardization and about getting user needs into standards. Um, he wasn't very happy with this photo, but you'll live with it. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? Um, and he, he fights the OGC battle for us. So it's about going to meetings, about convening telephone calls, horrible hours because the time zone thing's really terrible. Um, and I was eventually going to get to this slide which starts to show some of the ideas of the related table extension. Because we took that idea about media and went, how can we generalise it? And the idea is that you take some base table which is full of features or maybe some non-spatial data and you say how it's linked to something else in here. So instead of having a database schema that can have 10 photos in it because that's how many columns you've allowed for the photos, what you can do is just link them off. And the key to this part about making it many to many is this idea of a related, uh, a relationship table in the bottom, which just links the primary keys in each row. <coughs> There's a trick that I'll come to later where that relationship table can have extra attributes. Um, so now we've taken this original geo package contents thing that you saw at the start, the key to discoverability, and the extension stuff, which is the bottom box here for those people that can't read it, and I can't read my screen from here, added an extra thing that says how to discover the relations. And that idea of discoverability and extensibility are really key to GeoPackage. Um, and now you can shove whatever you want in the related table and link it back to your features table, 
and inevitably people resort to the same kinds of test data. You, you kind of do one thing that might be a little bit sensitive and then you go back to just doing cats. <laughs> there are no goat photos in this one. Um, so these were Jeff's cats. Um, I'm not sure I like the cat at the top, but the one in the middle is kind of, kind of okay, and I'm not a cat person. And now you can tell what the location of those cats were. So it's not just the photo and you would have to pull out the XF stuff. Now you can put this into your geo package and you can use the indexing when you've got tens of thousands of these things without having to do a full scan, open every photo, extract the XF. I did a different one. Um, so these are airports. This is, is Tampa because I was trying to appeal to the audience. Um, the main international airport is the one on the top left. McDill is the US SOCOM base down the bottom. Um, and this data is, is together. So it's the runways, polygon geometry, the centre of mass, which are those little dots. Um, so that's with basically the centre of the airport. And you could have, imagine, additional layers over the top of this. But there's stuff that applies to multiple airports. So for people who are not familiar, things like approach procedures for airports end up having to de-conflict between different airports and often have very similar approaches and in a place like Tampa, it's going to be over the water so you don't annoy too many people. Um, so there are published procedures for this stuff and they get published in multiple kinds of forms but the authoritative one is almost always going to be some kind of PDF. And they're relatively large, at least when you get ones for every airport. So you don't want to duplicate these things. You do want to be able to link them forwards and backwards. Um, so this is the arrivals. Sometimes it's not related to everything in that area. Um, the one on the right is the GPS approach. That only applies to one runway. Um, in this case, it's runway 19 left. Um, and you do want to use the one on the left for all the arrivals, at least from the different directions, but you only want to use link the one on the right to one particular airport. So now we've got this idea of, of linking multiple kinds of media back into a single database and reusing it instead of copying it. Don't repeat yourself. Database principles. And taking that database idea a bit further, Tracy Birch, who works for Softworks, came up with the idea that you could potentially link rows to the table with other rows. So you can start to build up a graph representation. So if you were trying to do, um, I've got a safe house, and this was a big uh, use case for the, for the Softworks people, and I want to describe about the sensors that are on my safe house and how they link to each other and which ones I need to disable in which orders, you can start to build up that idea of it's not just a straight table, it's a table with relationships between rows. Um, and that idea was, was a really powerful idea. We don't yet have good ideas about how we're going to represent that. Um, not getting the audio. Um, the other one was, it doesn't just have to be something you could see. No, there, there's meant to be audio for this. Um, I'm thinking my laptop doesn't have the right things up. Um, but Ashley Antonides, um, who works for Radiant Blue and has a strong background, her graduate work was in, um, in sound mapping, and that's a photo of the Bay Bridge. So people who've seen the film Sneakers, um, she had a lot of that kind of work about how you map audio and turn audio back into places, um, variations over time. Um, she also wrote the final version of the report um, on this related tables extension, um, which you can find at that URL, and Jeff worked really, really hard to get that number. Um, OGC is very protective about their numbers. Um, so what we ended up with was this proof of concept, interoperability experiment, um, but a really powerful idea that starts to turn this geo package as a container, just lumping all your data in together, and turning it into a set of related database sort of concepts. I think it's got a lot of potential, um, and I think my 15 minutes are probably up. Think so. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> Um, so, uh, but my question is, um, how long is it, I mean, it, 
GeoPackage, the way to go in the future, is it going to replace the, the shapefile and the GMLs in the future? Um, and how long before that might happen? It is working, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it, it might keep replaying, I'm not sure. Um, I, I think it has in some places. It's, it's, not, it's a solution to a very particular set of offline problems. Um, and there's been some pretty rapid uptake. I think the QGIS 3 adoption of, of GeoPackage as the native format was a, was a huge step forward for us. Um, so you're probably already using it, haven't even noticed. Um, but it's not the solution to every problem. Um, there's putting everything into one file does come with complexities. Like if you don't have good indexing, it's going to suck. Um, there are file systems that don't like files being more than about two gig. Um, it's not a, a SQLite or a, um, or, or a standards problem, it's just the underlying operating system has an undesirable implication. So you, you, it's not the solution to every problem, um, but I think for places where shapefile was traditionally used as a exchange mechanism or as a storage mechanism, it's a really good replacement. Okay. Um, yeah, you want to... Is there next one? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Who's next? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, can I ask you a question? Yeah, please go ahead. Um, I'm really excited by the extensions in Packet tonight. I've used it informally to kind of extend the format. And it's great that it's just simple line. Um, but one of the monoliths inside there is the, the geometry blocks, and I'm really interested in virtualizing that. So storing the geometry as a set of indices to the formats and parts of the geometry. I wonder if you care anything like that. Um, the the geometry is notionally extensible, um, and I think the the problem is going to be that. It's that idea that you can't be interoperable by yourself. Um, so convincing other people to do it, it's going to require a lot of phone calls at three o'clock in the morning. Um, it's, a lot of this standardization work isn't really about the best solution. It's about the social system in which we work. And it's all of those phone calls and consensus building and going to conferences and talking to people about their niche and the problems they need to solve. Um, so there's a whole lot of indexing work that's extensible because some people didn't want to do it. Um, and most people don't need it. It doesn't take that much to do a full table scan. But for the people who needed it, they really needed it. So you end up with this almost compromise engineering, consensus engineering might be a better way to put it. Thanks. Uh, we've, got, we've got time probably for at least one. Yeah, two. Uh, you mentioned uh, extra attributes on the relationship uh, table. Yep. Is there support in the spec for describing the nature of the relationship? So the relationship is, is discoverable. Um, there's a schema extension in um, GeoPackage that's not very well supported, but does allow you to constrain what the allowable relationships are it doesn't really have a way to convey the semantics of the relationship. Um, so we do have some, so we can say that this relationship is to a media entry, as opposed to just some general set of attributes. What we don't have is this very flexible <coughs> way of describing it to the human. <coughs>